Next, let's talk about uh, scales, especially uh, digital or electric scales. Um, what they do, like everything else, is, what we talked about is try to measure um, something's mass, and and they're way easier to use, and they have a lot more um, a lot more flexibility in, in, in how you use them. So if you take a look here, um, we have two two various uh, sets of precision. We've got this real simple gray one here and a little bit more advanced one. Let's talk about the gray one just for a minute. You'll notice that I turn it on and it says there is zero mass on there, which there is. There's nothing on the surface right now. Okay, so if we put some mass on, you will notice that it reads the mass. 20 grams is what it should be. This is a 20 gram mass and it's great. You have your mass, it, it, it's, you record it and um, everything's fine. But what if, what if you wanted to measure something that was like a liquid or a loose, a loose solid like, like sand or something like that? Well, then you would need a container. The problem is, is if you put the container on there and try to measure the liquid with it, what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna measure the, uh, you'll end up measuring the, 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 the uh, container with it. So what do you do? Well, what you can do, these have these really neat feature that if you put the container on the balance and you hit this button, it usually says zero or sometimes it'll say tear, T-A-R-E, it will set that as the new zero. So now you have the new zero and then when you add mass to it from there, and I can add mass from there, you can then see how much mass I've added, but you can see that's a 10 gram, so it added 10 grams of mass. But be careful, because it has set this mass as the new zero. So what do you think will happen if I remove the mass that's on there? If you said it would read a negative value, well done. That's exactly what happens. Whenever this mass, uh, whenever you remove the mass, it, it says that we are no longer at the zero. We are now below the zero. And by definition, when you're below the zero, you have a negative value. All right? So be aware of that. Be careful of that. Uh, digital balances usually, um, they're a little more, I wouldn't say they're more delicate, but there's you can really mess them up. There's a couple things you do. One thing, don't add too much weight to them, uh, too much mass to them. And usually the range is around 500 grams, but if you know, if you're from America, it's up roughly a pound of, of mass, which isn't much, it isn't much. You know, add even little things. The other thing my students like to do is like just measure random things in the lab when they have time. Just be careful, don't overweight it, don't put too much things on there. Don't ever put your hand on it, because you'd be surprised how much force you can apply. And they're very, very sensitive or delicate. Sometimes students will put their hand on and try to see um, like how much mass they can get. And that's just that's just not a good practice because you can end up damaging the balance pretty bad. Let's take a look at this fancy guy right here. First thing you'll notice with the fancy guy is there's a lot more numbers. Whereas before it just read 20 grams, this thing is now gonna be like 20.004, right? So what is the difference? You might say, well, there's more numbers. Well, that is actually called precision. And it gets into this idea of something called significant figures, which is a little beyond us, but you will definitely learn about this later, but definitely something you wanna, you wanna keep in mind, okay? With these, sometimes these come in like, these fancier ones come in like these boxes. If they're in a box, it has a sliding door on the side, make sure that before you measure, you close the door and before you get your measurement. The next thing, probably, honestly, probably the first thing you notice about this is why does that number keep changing? The number is gonna vary quite a bit because that is a very, very small mass, 0 0.001 gram. Even wind or air currents can mess it up, all right? So don't worry too much about that. I've had students sit there and wait like a full minute for that thing to stop. It's, it, it may not stop, right? Don't panic over that. That's one reason why I actually have the boxes around it is to prevent that from happening a little bit. So just be just be aware of that, that, that last number, don't worry too much about it. These are also a little more, even more sensitive than the other ones. So please be very careful with that. You'll notice that they have these, uh, usually have these plates on the top, all right? Um, just make sure that they are on securely and flush, uh, flush the, they're on flush before you begin. One thing that I was taught, and it just depends on the on the on the the type of balance, is that 
you don't want to put anything on there that's too hot. And I know for mine, there's actually a few more plastic pieces. So the idea is if you place something really hot on there, the heat can transfer through the metal into the plastic and, and can kind of warp things. Heat can warp metal and can mess up the. So you really, unless you absolutely have to, you don't want to put anything too hot on the balance. And if you do, don't leave it on for too long. You'll also notice, this is interesting, you can see this. If you do put a hot object on a very sensitive balance, that last number will go even more nuts because you actually create like currents of air around the object. As the hot air, air gets in, it gets hot around the object and then it floats up and draws in more. And it actually, you can see a difference whenever you do the, in the, the amount of uh, variation you get. Another thing to watch out for, and I think this is hilarious, I have some of the smartest students in, in my school, and they come in, they try to use these balances. It's like, it's reading zero, I don't understand. It's like, you have, you have the cover on. There's sometimes they have these covers that come down over it, and I get it, it kind of looks like just an extension of the piece, but just check to make sure that your balance doesn't have a cover, and just pull that bad boy bag uh, before, before you begin. One thing you have to worry about with these uh, fancier uh, uh, electric uh, balance or scales is that uh, they they have a level on it and the reason is they're so sensitive that even being a little bit uh, off level can can cause there to be air so they actually have these little adjustable feet on the side that you can actually go through and get it right it probably will already be uh, balanced for you but if you're curious you can see on the back of some of these and I don't want to pick it up because that's another thing is that you really don't want to move these balances too much uh, ask your instructor before you start moving around obviously this position of this one is is not the best you'd probably want it closer to the edge um, but it's on the back you'll see like a little a bubble and some liquid and, and you can adjust the uh, you can adjust the feet to get, to get it a little bit more balanced. So just be careful. Try not to move these. These are, you know, a little more durable. You probably still shouldn't, but it, these are way more expensive and, and ones that um, moving is, is a, you have to be pretty careful with it and make sure that it, uh, you definitely don't want to drop them because, uh, like I said, pretty delicate, pretty precise measurements.